we're here at AudioVice Live, and you've got something really cool that you're going to be showing us. Yeah, so um, we're excited to show our dynamic subtitle overlay. This is a feature that we've been teasing and talking about for a good bit now. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a sneak peek. This is an alpha build, still not quite ready for prime time, but give you an idea of what's coming. This feature is fantastic when you have subtitles that wind up in the black bar area, which is going to be predominantly scope movies on a scope screen. And so uh, we'll talk about kind of the background, why this is important, how we have dealt with it in the past, and what's new with DSO. Yeah, okay? definitely. Before you dive into that, do you have a launch date? We do not have a launch no. date other than pretty soon. Pretty soon? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. That's good to speak. That's yeah. good enough. So yeah. soon enough, it's coming. Yes, it's much sooner than when we first started talking about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, the, let's talk about subtitles, why they're important, because it's a deeper reason than a lot of people realize. Right. Mm -hmm. So the studies have shown that subtitle use continues to grow and become increasingly popular across all age groups. Something like 50 or 60 percent of people watch with subtitles on, and really surprisingly. 50% of 18 to 35 year olds have subtitles on. That's crazy, because you think it's the older population, but it's actually the younger generations of folks. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's the key point is that it's not just about accessibility. This is because they help follow the story better, pick up on cues that you may have missed. Mm -hmm. How many times you've been in a movie and been like, hey, what, what did they say? Oh, I don't know, did you see it? No, you gotta go back. I mean, you're talking to each other in the middle of a scene, you've gotta go back, it interrupts the whole flow. So some yeah. people like to have it on you know, for that. And so the issue is, is that subtitles are generally a bit of an eyesore, or they're a nuisance, mm -hmm. unnecessary evil for those that want them on the screen, whether it's because of their, um, you know, needing it for hearing or whether it's because needing it for comprehension and following the story. For foreign language films, you're, you know, Absolutely. trying to be a purist and keep the native language track on. Yes, and some people also struggle with, if you're watching a UK film in the US and vice versa, just oh, yeah. the accent difference can be a little bit more, you know, if you have to get the volume up more and it can be a little Side bit- Sci-fi movies with difficult yeah, names. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of, and there's a lot more foreign movies, um, foreign films and stuff that are, that are coming out. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good point. And yeah. so how do we deal with these issues, right? Because the, the, the first issue is subtitles are in the black bar area on scope movies. Right. If it's one line, it's down here. If it's two lines, it's the it's here and here. If it's three lines, it's here, here, and here. Okay. And so, this causes the issue because when you have a scope screen, a projector screen, or if you have a scope flat panel, like a 21 by nine, right. what happens is it's zoomed out to fill the screen, right? So, right. so you zoom, zoom, zoom. Right now, I should say that we're simulating a 2.40, I think, screen. So what's here and here is not black bar, but just pretend like it just is not there. Sure. And this is your scope screen. Sure, okay. Okay, and so scope screen to moving here. So in order to fill this, so it doesn't look like this, you're zooming out mm -hmm. and then your corners are touching the corners of the screen, but your subtitles now wind up on the masking, right? So it's since this off. is not here, it's either on your wall or on your masking cut off, right. okay? And so you are, let's go, you run into issues with it being in the black bar and you need to move it up. So that's what we're doing right here, okay? So right now, this is our, I guess we could call it old school subtitle handling in that it's been a hero feature. People love it. They still love it. There's still a use for it. And we do this by shrinking the image. So instead of zooming the projector out, we determine how much we need to zoom the image down so that we can bring back the subtitle that's in that black bar area. <laughs> right on. Okay? okay. And that has worked really well and people like it, but it has one downside in particular, which is that the image needs to shrink and grow. Right. Okay, so you can sell it, you can tell it, hey, don't change throughout the movie or only change every five or 30 seconds or three minutes or whatever it yeah, is. Because visually that can yeah, throw you it, off a little it, it bit, It kind of right? takes you out of the movie. Yeah. Right, so the ideal solution would be to bring it out, right? And so let's take a look at TV dimmed on us while we were talking, right? But <laughs> you can see, in addition to the issue about it being the black bar, the other issue commonly is that they're way too bright. 
Yes. Okay. And a dark scene, you could have the darkest, darkest scene. There's still this bright. This is a pretty, you know, kind of mid or lowish mid APL scene, average picture level scene. In a and, brightly lit room, that's not an issue, but in a really dark, true home theater environment, right. you're blowing your eyes out. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's glaring. Yeah. It creates eye strain. And it's, you know, you got to do this for a two hour movie, mm -hmm. three hour movie that builds up over time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that for a lot of people, they're unnecessarily large, right? So you've got it in the black bar and it needs to be moved up. You've got it too bright. It needs to be smartly dim mm -hmm. and you've got it too large. It needs to be smartly sim smaller to your preferences. And that's where dynamic subtitle overlay comes in. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And by the way, you might not be able to see this on the camera, but the, the bottom of the image is right through there, right? So. Right, yep, right at the, the bottom of these yep. subtitles are. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on dynamic subtitle overlay and you can see the difference. Okay, so now we have the content fully and like here is our bottom yep okay and that is what it looks like with ignore wow so okay. if you didn't have any subtitle handling it would be cut off uh-huh this is what it looks like with our older solution where you you don't get them cut off but you had to deal with this the image jumping on you sure okay and then with dynamic subtitle overlay you get the best of both worlds where it brings it back. It adds, notice how it doesn't have, your camera probably can't pick this up. It doesn't have a transparent background here. Like a, uh, you know, it's like a semi-transparent background. Mm -hmm. We added transparent background that you can control the opacity. Oh, so to, you can, you can lighten this up and see yeah, more? Yeah, right. So like I went up there or yeah, you could go dark and this that. is also a dark scene. So it's going to be harder to see. Sure. Yeah. You know, but especially in a bright scene, you can see through it. That's really cool. Okay. And so that also helps reduce eye strain by adding to the readability. And then the brightness limiter, now it smartly has dimmed the subtitles to match the APL. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it, it's And great. this changes from scene to scene then. Yeah, because it's looking, it'll change interesting. If all of a sudden there's an explosion and it gets really bright and there's a subtitle still on, it'll get bright, but it happens instantly with this. So you don't see the fluctuation. It's not flashing around. Right. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. And so what's really nice about this is that you're not getting that glaring thing. So picture a dark cave scene. And maybe have 20 nits. Nits is like a measure of brightness, right? So you might have a bright setup with 100 nits, 200 nits, 300 nits. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've got a laser projector, a modern projector. A lot of these have a dynamic black solution. What do the dynamic black solutions do? They look at how many nits is needed for the scene and it can smartly dim the laser down. So it right. says, oh, I only need 20 nits. I'm currently at 100% or 70%, I'm getting 150 nits. I'm gonna instantly drop that, get inky blacks and not overfill and, and be able to you know, fill the room with light because of you know, what, what's unnecessary. Right. However, when you've got subtitles that are this bright in that dark cave scene, what is the display going to do? The display does not know this is a subtitle and the display is not gonna smartly dim it. In some cases, it can interfere with the effectiveness of the dynamic black solution because it can't so your floor adjust. is lifted. Right. Like it wasn't a dark, a super dark scene. Right. And that's right. where you want the benefit of dynamic black. Okay. So this will automatically adjust as you go. And let's talk about the size. Okay. Personally, as I'm moving in 5% increments, I like it about here. Well, that's that's a wide range that goes from a zero to a hundred. Zero to 30. Zero to 30, okay. Right. Still, I mean, that's right. 30 steps. Yeah, I mean, like, this is 30. You oh, know, okay, certain, so 15 steps. Yeah, um, well, no, it's just 5%. Oh, 5%, okay. Yep. And so generally you probably don't want it smaller. Uh -huh. You might, but you're gonna be, especially if we're a projector, you're gonna be pretty far. I'm finding that 25% is good. You know, from my personal taste, everybody, you know, that's why you can set it up however you want. Yep. And then the other thing that we've added is adaptive color. 
Okay, and what adaptive color does is it helps make the whole thing more harmonious. So when I put on adaptive color, okay, it is now, it's really cool, picking from the color palette the predominant color and tone of the image and reflecting that in the subtitle. That's really amazing. I mean, it when it's so much better than the bright white. Yes, and the beautiful That's thing really is, cool. It makes the whole thing integrated and getting back to why we need subtitles, why we want subtitles, why they're more important. This is the idea by being able to use next generation techniques to improve the immersion and to have subtitles on the screen without being frustrating mm -hmm. and without creating a nuisance, mm -hmm. especially for the person that may be with you who doesn't want them on in the first place. That's going to be a lot more tolerable. Which it's funny you say that because I've had that situation in my own home theater room with my family yeah absolutely where someone wants them on they turn them on and a couple people are like whoa that's too bright and then we end up turning them off because it is right uncomfortable right exactly yeah, it can give you headaches and distract you you're right and, yeah. and you know i like to use them it helps me kind of comprehend the story and follow what's going on and sometimes there's interesting things in there you know like somebody mumbling under their breath yeah, and yeah. it'll say that and who said it like the person's name and I'm, they're off camera but they're talking and it's like wait who is that talking oh that's this character right so just to do a quick a b now if we combine all this right so we're combining the dynamic subtitle overlay by being moving it into the screen mm -hmm. we're then adding this transparent semi-transparent layer to help improve the readability we're limiting the brightness to only what's necessary to read it and we're reducing the size in this case by 25 percent you put that all together and we go back to how it looked before yeah with that being cut off or that that and yeah. that's how the best you yeah. can do today without the so and as you just go back and forth you've got the image shifted and super bright and super big versus yep. being able to really That's enjoy crazy. that. That's crazy. And the whole idea that is in crazy. summary is to be able to enjoy a more harmonious experience with everything integrated while keeping it readable. Like you would think that if you were to take the predominant color of the tone and make the subtitles that way, they would clash. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. can see here, it does the opposite. It helps minimize their eye strain. Because yeah. look how like natural, hopefully the camera is picking this up well. But I'll show you, while that thing is in motion, let me just skip to the next scene. This is really cool. We check out the pool. This blue get picked up in the subtitle. Oh, wow. And you knew the transition. So it's not just like instantly from one color to another. As the colors in the scene change. It just kind of swirls and changes with it. Right. And it's very, it, we've managed to do it from the feedback I've gotten here today. It's the first time we're showing it in a way that's, instead of being distracting mm -hmm. is the opposite it's the right opposite. whereas yeah, it really is right like that's distracting yeah that's very distracting right and i mean just look how big that is especially like it said like chuckles i mean it was like door bang it's yeah. monstrous right yeah and so being able to do this it's so subtle i mean it's giving you the best of both worlds pretty much i mean Right. <laughs> so cool. And it also adds a bit of a fun element to it as well, right? So, you know, it has a practical purpose. And I mean, it's just looking at that, it just removes that glare and that eye strain. So in a nutshell, this will be coming really soon. It'll be available in the MB Core Premium. It does require the Core Premium package, uh -huh. the MB Pro and the MB Extreme. It'll be available as a free update for everyone that has those makes and models. And on the Core model? Yeah, in the core of the premium with package. The core premium package added, which also doubles your warranty and adds a bunch of other features yeah. as well. If you go to mevyourmb.com, there's a, a comparison document that shows everything that is available in, in there. Is, is there anyone else in the market that is doing anything like this? No, this is completely a unique and of... innovative within Mevyour Labs. I mean, even the subtitle management is unique in that you don't have to touch any buttons on your remote. You don't mm -hmm. have to do anything. It just automatically sizes as needed. But now we're adding the removing of the sizing and adding all these additional layers, um, making the MV. You know, again, this is another one of our 
big things as you know we are constantly innovating and looking at way new ways of doing things and not not just like making our sharpening algorithm a little bit better or our tomac a little bit better but finding new ways to increase immersion for our audience and make yes. a more enjoyable experience in their theater just out of curiosity when you first came up with this concept did you have all of these layers of what it could do built in or is this something that as you first time you built it then you're like oh wait what if we had this adaptive color added on yeah or... yeah so it's an interesting question um you know we have been through a lot of different iterations and a lot of different planning and it has continued to evolve we're always very mindful that we're not complicating the menu system and the menu structure. So we don't want to over engineer things mm -hmm. and have too many options, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the yeah. end of the day, you could always have, you know, another option to do this or another option to do that. Right. So we had to whittle it down to what are the most functional and important parts of it. And this has really been a great thing. The adaptive color actually kind of came by accident because we were testing it on a scene from Incredibles where they were all in there with their red uniform. Okay. And we were testing, you know, just playing around with different preset colors like orange. And we were like, hey, that's actually pretty cool the way that blends with the scene. And let's, why don't we try to see what that looks like? And we were a little skeptical at first, but after using it, we were like, Oh, this is going to be a hit. And all the information's like, in the metadata, right? Coming right, through. Right. Through. Yeah, that's just Not amazing. As as like a team right. Aspect. Yeah. So cool. Exactly. Will this be on display at Cedia? Yeah, be... absolutely. Like, Come on out and see us. We'll yeah. be at a, about a dozen different locations out at Cedia 2025. Fantastic. Um, and including our own setup and partnership rooms that we have. So it'll be on display for you to see and play with. Awesome. Rick, thanks so much for hanging My out with pleasure. us. pleasure. Thank folks you, out Todd. there, this is really cool. I mean, this is one of the more unique, I mean, you have so many unique features built into your processors, but this one, like you said, it just fills this need that hadn't been filled. And uh, yeah, it's yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, it's great. I mean, if you've got a scope screen and scope movies, which is where this DSO comes into play, yeah. right? Some of the subtitles do need to be overlapping some of the black bars, mm -hmm. which happens on pretty much all scope movies and on scope screens is issue. It's a great solution and we're continuing. This is just a sneak peek of what it is. And we have some other ideas in mind as well, but we need to wait on that. Can't wait to see it. All right, folks, that's Matt Thanks, VR, uh, NV.com, correct? Yep, MattVRNV.com, we've got, um, our free access to our official dealer training, which is open to the public and open to um, you know, consumers, anybody that wants to learn what it is, how do you install it, what are the options, what comes in the box, awesome, you know, everything to go up there. And we've got guides, how to connect it, work with your Kaleidoscape, your Apple TV, all your popular sources. Very easy to get going. Cool. Thanks, right, Todd. Yeah, you need to go over there and check it out. You'll really, uh, I mean, I can't wait to see this in its final version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be good stuff. Pretty cool. All right, folks, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you at the Home Theater Forum, abnirvana.com. Thanks for your time.